Hi guys, uh, thought we might as well just go live and have a quick chat before uh, before other people come in. Uh, I'm just going to have to look over at the uh, the chat there, which I can barely read with my eyes. But uh, because of the way I'm running OBS, if I start typing away now, I'll probably close the stream down. So could you just all give me a heads up on if we're okay on sound and camera? And whilst I do that, I'll just say... Hi, Tommy, Nick, um, Steve, thanks for coming in, guys. And who was it that's come in since I, uh, since I started? Eva, hi, Eva. Wayne, hi, mate. Um, not got to the back of the garage for that bit of oak for you yet, but I will get there in the next few days because I've picked another van load full of wood up, so there is sorting in my future. Right, um, are we on six yet? Um, we've got something a bit different tonight, actually. I'm going to uh, just, um, yeah, did you notice how the camera followed me there? I've got my gimbal set up tonight, and using the control, I can go to uh, work position, if I'm working on the phone, very quick, uh, working down here, where I'll be doing some of the carding, or I can stand back up and have it come with me and I can go back down over to the keyboard if needs be. So, simple as a press of a button. I'm really quite excited about this gimbal and the opportunities it brings. Uh, right, let me put you on this camera. That's better, guys. So I can read the chat easier now. John S, hiya, mate. Richard, Rob, hiya. Thanks for coming, guys. Martin, good to see ya. Uh, right, are we on six now? I believe we're on six. Right, guys, so welcome to Making a Better Lives channel. I'm Di, as always, usually. Sometimes I'm not quite sure. And for you guys who've been to the channel before, you, this is something different for you. I'm hoping we get some new guys in because I've tried to promote this elsewhere. I'm doing some carding, which is a process uh, in processing fiber um, any fiber as it happens tonight we've got alpaca uh, I've got a friend who's got six alpacas and he has three spare fle fleeces every year so I get them and process them but it's all done entirely by hand and it's a long-winded process so I'm just getting stuck into this whilst I've got the time it was something I didn't need to think about I could just grab the gear and bring it in here um, and get on with it plus it needs doing so double whammy i'm going to try and keep an eye on the chat which is going to be difficult i've just realized because i'm miles away from it so if you let me put you on our lovely hold music for a second i'm going to go and get my tablet and bring that over where i can read the chat and then we'll think up any questions you've got and uh, i'll be happy to answer them see you shortly guys
Hi guys, I'm back. So, uh, hi Stace, by the way, I've just seen you come in. Um, I'm just going to get stuck in now. So, first things first, I'm going to show you the, 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 the alpaca fleece that we're working with. Now, carding isn't your first process. When you get a fleece, it's filthy. It's full of all sorts of uh, rubbish and let me take you down here and you wash it you wash it by hand usually you pick all the real detritus out first and then you dry it and then it needs carding now unfortunately this batch is a little uh, oh, it looks like dreadlocks that's because I over dried it slightly um, that was entirely my stupid fault but it's still okay for carding there's just going to be ever so slightly more loss so the cards or carding boards these ones are by ashford who make a lot of uh, this kind of stuff i've got an ashford wheel as well um i've got a spinning wheel just off shot now just in case we get that far i can show you what we're doing so oh yeah steve are they hello mate um must have a catch up soon give us a bell in fact give us a bell after the live if you're not busy um so i'm just going to get into my process and then you can ask me questions if need be i take a card in my non-dominant hand facing down the hook teeth are hooking this way i take a handful of whatever fiber i'm using be it sheep or alpaca or whatever man-made fibers and I pull it on this isn't sometimes you can just dump a handful on like that this because I've over dried it and it's a little bit felted this is kind of doing a bit of the carding before using the other card I can just strip on enough and that's actually probably a bit much because what I'm aiming for is a roll lag and a roll lag's a term for some carded wool that's rolled off your cards in a particular way and it's easy to then just pick up a roll lag and spin and just keep picking one and joining on as you go so once you've got one board uh what do they call it doft is when you take it on i can't remember what it's called when you put it uh take it off i have a look i should have a, a crochet hook close by any little bits of uh crap that are still in there you can't see that really but it's a bit of um it's a bit of moss that's obviously the old packers laid in i keep a crochet hook to hand for picking any particularly awkward bits out but the process basically is combing always with the uh, the teeth facing in opposite directions as you can see and i find tease the fibers down the bottom here so that you gradually start to get a few across and onto the other side and then just work your way slowly up the board i find if you lock your elbow in against your side helps you support it postures are ever so important in this you can very easily give yourself a bad back so once you've got it combed straight because these are slightly curved to pick it up and off you roll and you transfer it all across and then switch hands this fiber is not terrible but you just repeat the process until what you've got is you've got all of the fibers laying in the same direction which we have and with i'm checking that there's no big lumps or pieces of straw i'm happy that that is done enough actually which is quite quite good pick it all up onto the one and then this time I use my back edge and I lift the wool up against the bottom row of teeth and I lay it down over it, the top of itself flush I then get the teeth back in that corner against the other teeth and I'm going to roll and lift all as one Sometimes it takes a couple of goes. 
and then that's transferred across to here and that is a row lag. Now it's worth giving them a little rub between your hands so that they're not so fly away. I mean this is, I've got a fan heater on, you can see how light that is. <laughs> That's why there's a white sheet down because I'm going to keep dropping things. But the idea with that is all the fibres are now running in, in one direction, coiled round. So when we start spinning this from this end, they will pull straight and we'll end up with a fibre that's nice and in line. Usually there's a few little bits that get by. You can pick them out at this stage or I tend to be quick enough to pick them out as I'm spinning. I then use an old knitting bag which uh, is ideal for laying them down in and I work until this is full and that's usually enough to get me a couple of balls of wool or yarn as we should say and then it's rinse and repeat so now guys I'm going to look back at the comments and just uh, carry on I'm going to put you on a ever so slightly wider camera angle which is a bit easier for me to stay on top of then I've just realised that my chat's frozen, excuse me one second. Hi Mike, who's Ruba? Sorry, I'm not sure who Ruba is. Am I still in frame? Yeah, that's all right, is it? Oh, Ru sorry, Ruba, no, that's who you were talking to. Thought I was going mental for a second there. Oh, pickle red onions. Beaver, that sounds nice. So, anyone got any experience with uh, with processing fibre at all? Spinning or, or weaving? I see, here's an example of where I've got some little bitty bits. They're just very short fibres and I'll pick them out and I save them, I have a bag here, uh, just throw them in. When they're done, I often wash them again and either use them for felting when the bag's full or sometimes use them for packing when we send things out. Because when they're well washed, it's antibacterial or antimicrobial wool. Um, at least sheep's wool is. I'm not 100% sure an alpaca. It's quite different. Um, but they're, uh, yeah, there are companies, Penguin and another company that produce packing material that is quite literally sheep's fleece washed and put in a biodegradable uh, bag. Oh, this is much easier when you're sat in a recliner yeah they put in a biodegradable bag and I've got oh, I can't find them now and they're just like flat pack material uh, and really good for insulating a lot of food gets shipped in it the hair of Mike Are we uh hey you know I've been asked that somebody somebody had um what dog were it now a new on it no they are in a Kita. And they, they, they saw the hat I've got on, actually. Me, um, this beanie, uh, which is actually from the same alpaca. This is last year I, uh, I processed and knitted this. I also did, I did one for the owner out of the other two alpacas. Uh, one looks grey-white they call it white and one's like a tan color the white one it's actually lots of different colors in there so I grade it and when I knitted his hat it's like a self stripping yarn self sorry self striping yarn that's my dyslexia there which is basically you get a batch, patch of color and another patch of color and they often line up in patterns anyway I did him one same pattern as this but obviously with the pale colors it looks fantastic I got a an answer phone message from Alaska, I believe it was Alaska or Canada or somewhere. Anyway, don't ring me back, die. We're in wherever we are. I just had to ring you. It's minus 20 here, and I've got 
a set of mountain climbers, ski instructors or whatever with us, with these right, right posh, like 100 quid proper, proper hats that all ski instructors wear. And they're complaining about it being a particularly cold one. I've had to take your hat off twice because <laughs> it's too warm. And I tell you what, it is. If I go out in this shopping, too warm. But with my sheep's fleece, with my sheep's hats, because of the amount of lanolin I leave in them, they are pretty much water repellent. This though, I think it's all the little wispy flyaway hairs. Water just beads up on it. Shake your head once when you're back in and that's it. Right, back to back to what watching what we're actually doing there, guys. Nineteen people, so this isn't as interesting as the turning then. <laughs> it's really not, is it? Mind you, I could have an I've had a nasty cut from these little teeth before. You usually have back of my knuckles. I probably injured myself more doing this than I have uh, turning. You pick up a, a real feel for how much you actually need to do and how much you can get away with. So far, this has been better than the last time I carded. There's not as many little flyaways or detritus in it. And having said that now, I'll probably find every bit. You see, that's what I'd call a good roll. Like I've got that little bit more wool on it and it's holding together a little bit better. And still, I can pick out those little bits of detritus there. Hey, Gav. Or have I already said hello? I don't know what's happening anymore. Stace, need to learn how to knit a sheep's wool and hat. No problem, Stace, I can teach you. I knit those hats that I do, I knit on uh, multiple needles though, like fair isle knitting or knitting in the round as they call it. I just find it really easy. Um, there's no joining it after then. You just keep knitting whatever pattern it is i do a rib there knit one pearl one pearl one knit one and um well you don't because when you're knitting in the round you don't have to reverse so you just keep knit, knit one pearl one knit one pearl one and uh, like it's it's cracking it really is and when it comes to the uh the pattern you just knit knit and knit and knit your tube until it comes down your head as far as you want it and then just decrease 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 uh, there are a few little clever stitches that you can do that means it sits nice and you get a nice seam where the crease is but once you get down to the last 12 stitches or so you just snip the wool pass it back through the loop and you're done it's so easy a pattern I uh, I've not done it for a couple of years because of time pressures but I used to always do this hats for the homeless where I'd buy a few balls of wool and used to get about six hats done and then they'd go to our local homeless centre for the homeless to use and I've seen two or three homeless people dodging around with, with my hats on. Not done from wool I've spun because, I mean, to be fair, for this hat, if I costed out the hours that go into processing this by hand and you wanted to buy one, for me to pay myself minimum wage and and cover my materials and my time and my electricity and heating and blah 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 I think you'd be looking at about 100 quid maybe maybe more actually but it's one of those when I get into flowing it with it all I become much more efficient much faster as we all do <laughs> Trust you, Mike, we're an alpaca joke. We got any more? Tell you what, I've not spent much time with them. I was, I was supposed to go up when they sheared them this year, or clipped them, um, and I didn't because of COVID. But it's, uh, well, look it up, unless you're easily distressed by animals in distress. 
shearing an alpaca it's not like shearing a sheep because they're big enough and they've got enough leverage with the limbs that they can really damage a man so it takes a few men and some equipment to shear them but they need it doing otherwise they i mean if you've ever seen a, i don't know whether alpacas suffer the same but sheep get blight and they basically get an open wound but because it's sometimes in as much as like eight inch of fleece usually on the sides i've found them before it's not getting air circulating so it's it's a wet wound and uh, it ends up being infested with maggots and the poor animals are getting eaten alive which is why we shear and why we dip um i say we i've not worked on a farm well not as a fat you know not being employed by a farmer in that capacity for many years thanks eva yeah i um i've collected things over the years if if steve harvey's still in he'll tell you i think actually it annoys him sometimes anything that's kind of creative artistic or requires you so i'm going to get rid of that because it's too knotted um anything practical like or even like shooting and archery and you know anything like that i've always been really like natural at ever since i was little i think some of it's i'm dyspraxic so i'm told i found out in adulthood um um that's a development de uh, developmental um learning whatever and now that how it's affected me is things like tying your shoelaces and that took me that little bit longer than everyone else and uh and i fall over a lot and anyway basically what i've worked out is because i've had to concentrate so much on learning things that involve manual dexterity such as turning i've got very good at kind of drawing so you're miles away over on that one aren't you let's bring you to this one i've spent a lot of time thinking about transferable skills so whenever i do something new my me, me brain is automatically looking out for tactile feedback sensory feedback of any kind that makes me think right this is very similar to x y and z that i've done before and it's it's not a conscious thing it's just something that's developed over my life hence why whenever i turn myself turn me on to something new i often pick it up quite quick but this um let's put you on that one <clears throat> this i've been doing a while and the way i learned this was well, the way I've learnt most things, I woke up Christmas Day, not a particularly good, good time for me, as I've mentioned before, and uh, we had something to eat, and all of a sudden, I nipped to the toilet, and I came back in the room, and there's uh, this big bag covering something, kind of, you know, waist height. Took the bag off, and it's a spinning wheel, and I, it was then explained that it, it's yours but it's on kind of permanent loan and some friends of the family through church they uh the friends of alan and madeline's actually which is steve's neighbors out of interest um they spin and they got quite a few wheels so with their spare ones they gave them to people that n couldn't afford one themselves because you know a brand new ashford's can be four six eight hundred quid depending what you get and uh, I asked them after I'd had it a couple of years you know do you want this back and they said whilst ever it's useful to you hang on to it um, so that's what I've done I've since got another wheel that I've had to rebuild uh, that's the one that's in with me now and I've got a third wheel that I don't think is ever going to be much more than an ornament it's just a uh, quite an old but simple DIY design um, which is why I bought it in a way is to see if it was a simpler design to make um, that's going to be something we do in the future but 
I need to work out holding methods for the actual wheel, both for turning the face and turning the rim. It's, uh, yeah, that's gonna be the thing. The rest of it's relatively easy, other than the flyer, relatively easy to turn. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm not gonna mess with the focus, but seeing as you're on the gimbal, I'm gonna take you down and show you the wheel quickly um, once I've done this. Have I missed any questions? If anyone's asked questions, don't forget to put double cues or several cues uh, and repeat them and shout at me if I've missed them, etc. etc. All 22 of you, nice to see you. <coughs> right, I'm just going to have to cut away from that camera briefly. I'll put you on that one so you can see what I'm doing. You just free up the cable. go is it gonna reach is it gonna reach right and let's bring you back onto this camera then so yeah with my hat on it there is the wheel so it's quite a traditional style wheel this um, when I got it somebody had glued the sections back together and they'd done it wrong uh, i had to break it here and then do a little bit of cleaning up on the mortis and tenons there um, but as you can see it's quite simple this it's a section of wood in each quadrant the hub's a two-part hub i'd like to make one slightly bigger which would involve cutting out in the uh, the baseboard there so i might need to think of another way of supporting these ten these uh uprights maybe an handle piece coming in at one side but the flyer this piece is called the flyer and you find because of the nature of where you're going with grain it's uh it can break on on these edges that's where they normally go Jane, is it our Jane that's just come in? Speak up if it is, Prouty. Um, ah! That is the problem with moving this camera. Uh, so yeah, you've seen the wheel. It's a wheel. You don't need to know much more than that. But yeah, we're gonna be, uh, I've even thought about a community project with that, perhaps. Uh, Everybody turns their own little bit and uh, all do it to correct measurements and then end up with a wheel between us. Right, um, I've just moved the position of this and it's caused us all sorts of grief. Shouldn't have done that. Let me see if we're still there. Uh... Oh no, what have I done? Yeah, all those noises yeah there we are there we go we're back in business uh, and it's moved slightly but that can be corrected does it still go to all of the positions yes yes okie doke so we know where we are then sorry guys back to business what have I missed in the chat then What's Gav confused about? Oh, it's my mum. Hello, mum. Oh, sorry, I didn't see it there. <laughs> Stop talking to me from the living room. What are you doing? <laughs> Told you about that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> there's not much more I can say about carding, really. It's just uh, a lot of this, so I'm just going to keep doing it until you've all gone or Emma starts, whichever comes sooner.
Yeah, there's lots of little bits. Now, I spoke to some with that first bit I did. See bits like that? Oh no, that's not bad, that's just bent. That is worth carding a little further. Of course, try to crochet or cut my mouth. If you, um, you can afford one, a drum card is much better than this. I uh, I can afford one or I could quite easily make one. There's lots of plans out there and they're quite simple in principle. But I'm looking for a source of carding cloth, which is the cloth you can see here that's just tacked onto these boards. If I can find the right source, i.e. at the right price in the right measurements, I'd rather make a bicycle powered carding machine because with the amount of fleece I've got access to, I could really make use of it. Yeah, Gav, um, you're close enough anyway. When we uh, when we get our courses up and running, um, there'll be kind of a taster working with wool type course. Um, one of the next things I want to look into when there's time, so probably not for a year or two, is flax, because you can grow flax quite easily. And I understand the retting process where you, you can do retting with nettles. That's I'm gonna use nettles first to, to nail that and then grow a bit of flax. But that's, uh, there's a slightly more aggressive combing process with flax. Uh, you have to beat all of the outside of the fibres off, but I want to get my hands on some and see how it how it spins. I also want a blending board because this alpaca's it's beautifully soft, but it'd make a much more durable yarn if uh, I could blend it with a little sheep's fibre. I think alpacas are supposed to have very very long um, fibres, whether these specific alpacas haven't then they're not an alpaca that's bred for the wool or or whether it's that the guys doing the clip are just doing it quick and for the animal's sake and not with the thought of the fibers being used because there's a heck of a lot of these little tiny tiny bits in and they're generally from where they've gone in twice with the shears or from from the under layer of uh, wool that is generally shorter. Well, that's again, I don't know much about alpacas. I've not even been up close with one of them. I could just see it getting into a bit of a spitting competition. Or is that? Well, that's llamas, isn't it? Oh, it's alpacas too. There I am talking to myself again. Mother, stop trying to get yourself on the internet for crying out loud. Oh yeah, I'll I'll show that hat at some point, but that's not what we're on about. That's just a hat I knitted. I've got other variations on. That's an example of fair isle knitting that my mum's talking about. It's uh, it's just where you have more than one colour of wool and just bring them to the front appropriately. I think the best one to show of that is I did a. Uh, I did a Space Invaders hat for myself. Unfortunately, it's stretched. <laughs> and I've got a big head as it is, so it's like more useful for, as a papoose these days, I think. It's just a red hat <laughs> and white, like snow. Comes to a bit of a point actually, it's uh, when I was still perfecting my pattern. I 
I've just reloaded my card before taking it off now easily distracted you see no I, d I did it either uh, I think it was oh here we go just throw throw them over then can't resist it can you <laughs> thank you <laughs> I know you don't. Well, don't force yourself on then. <laughs> Bless her. Right. Um, I can't remember whether we're saving that or not. That's what was meant by Christmas hat. Just bobble. Um, yeah, tried a brick stitch there. Rib stitch there with kind of a... Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I like did a snow, snow line, icicle type thing, and a bit of a barley twist there, cabling. Straightforward. Uh, again, this is where I was still getting the pattern right. You can see here, um, as you decrease, you get these nice seams. Well, they're not uniform on this. I think I worked out five was the best. Decrease at five or four. Decrease at four or five points. Don't matter so much in the uh, plain colour, really. To be honest, uh, that was something that went wrong. But my mother insisted in keeping it. Uh, the rim rolled because of the way I did it. The stitch that I did. That's just doing a straight knit or straight pearl on them, um, in the round. Stay. Uh, oh yeah, and that was the one I did here as an actual gift, I think, with the ludicrous pom-pom. That's uh, Waffle Stitch, I believe. Um, I've got a really good book that I'll... Uh, I'll add it to the... When I find it, I'll add it to the links. So if you come back to this when the video stays up, it'll be in the links. But it's a really good book. It's just very simple. If you can follow a knitting pattern, it's just got all the stitches in there. But I have a tendency to knit to my head size, which is uh, El Grande. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, I'm going to, oh. That's an example of Fair Isle again, just bringing alternate colours back round. Why does she save these things? I don't pick them and re-knit them. Mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Yeah, it's uh, it's not really. I like cats. It's a uh, quick return. You you know you can knock one out in an evening or two. Knock them out quicker if they're simple. But you know when you're doing a complex pattern, not not as easy. Hat hat is a hat. Yeah, I always think hats are just hats. I do like an hat though, which is good because I'm receding. If my father's watching, that's his fault. Cheers, Dad. Um, <laughs> I'm just waiting till he works out how to do commenting on YouTube. Then we're in for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll do you one, Val. Um, when I'll get time to do any knittings, anyone's guess, but... Because knitting's me... When I can't get up and move about, I'm stuck in my seat. All of this stuff side of me, so if I can sit upright, I do a bit of spinning. Carding, I tend to only do when I'm fit, because even now I can tell I'm hurting my back. Sometimes I'll, if I bring it in here in garage, I do it stood up walking about. But getting the uh, getting the camera to track me is not as easy as I made it look the other day. Oh, chat just moved too quick. Yeah, that's it, Ian. Keeps your head warm, does its job. <laughs> oh, nearly binned that one. Wouldn't hurt me back as much if I didn't have to bend to pick all that up. Yeah, I saw their hats. They look quite nice, Ian, the Taylor's Murfield ones. 
Yeah, I literally, because my washing technique is a hot wash, a tepid wash. This is generally wool. The alpaca I treat slightly differently, but hot wash, which loosens the lanolin and all the dirt that I haven't managed to pick out at first. Tepid wash, just to rinse that out. And I use a tiny little drop of just fairy liquid or dawn or whatever you call it in the States. Um, I don't bother trying to collect the lanolin, but I leave a lot in. I don't, like this, it's not clean really. The net bag that it's in, you can tell because this it, the net bag should be white and it's not, it's grey. But I found if you overwash and overwash, it, it can be a bit too, particularly this alpaca can be a bit too fly away. Um, and with the, with the sheep's wool, all of the lanolin grows out of it. I mean, you can just do cool washes, but then it's even more work. I'm going for a expedience yet results trade-off. And um, once I've done that, I found you can spin dry it. You, when wool's wet, particularly if it's warm, it stands a risk of felting. And I've discovered I drip dry it for a day, and then you can just do a, a fast spin. And then... Uh, I bet my mother chat chirps up about washing machine in a minute. Um, I'm not, uh, yeah. It's, um, yeah, with a bit of a spin in dryer, with it like on its cool, coolest setting, you can get it very, very close to dry. And then what I do is I just tease it out onto a, onto a blanket or tarp or something. But with this, I lit, I was checking the dryer every, you know, every minute or two. And then something distracted me for literally a minute and I came back and it looked like, looked like somebody had just shaved all the dreadlocks off. But it's not beyond, it's just made this part of the process harder, that's all. I love it when you get a flyaway bit that just goes straight into the rubbish bag. That <laughs> works out nice, that. Yeah, because you, I can, see, you'll not be able to see it, but I'm just. There's all sorts of little bits coming out here: blades of grass, uh, little burrs, whatever it's been laying on, straw. Get lots of little uh, fern moss. Fern moss seems to dry out and get stuck in the in the fleece quite readily. I'm sure there are people that are far more dexterous at doing this than myself. But like I was talking about earlier, I never got onto my point when this wheel turned up. It was literally a wheel, these cards, and a little bag of wool. So I went to YouTube, and there were there were videos, but they were terrible. And I didn't. I, I literally like watched half of one half of another and thought you're not telling me anything i can't tell by looking at the machine so i looked at the wheel worked out how it worked carded until i'd got what i thought i needed and then just got stuck in and i've been doing it about 10 or 12 years now it's pretty straightforward yeah you have to be careful washing knitted stuff um it's doable there's a good product called U clan for uh, my mother will spell it if she's still watching that that works well for uh, very gently washing it but don't put it in your washing machine but if you're hand washing which is possible washing up liquid it's all you need is that very very mild concentration of non-ionic surfactants just to loosen any debris that's all you need and Wool needs washing, washing far less. And this is natural sheep's wool. Needs washing far less than other fibres anyway. Certainly less than cotton of the man-made fibres. It's got, like I say, antimicrobial, antibacterial properties. Try it. Buy a pair of wool socks. 
and see how much longer you can go before your feet stink. <laughs> That's not official making a better life advice, that, by the way, guys. That's just me rambling. Am I too old, too young for that reference, Wayne? My father calls me Percy Thrower whenever I go and see my dad and my stepmom. Me and her get talking about gardening. He's like, "Has a eight pair of Percy Throwers, so I understand that reference. And uh, Heath Robinson's one that I'm often uh, liken to <laughs> when I've been creating. Yucalan. Thanks, Mum. So what did Jack do then? I knew a James Hargreaves at school. <laughs> I can't believe how well these have lasted, these cards. They're just starting to get a little tired now. But then you could just replace the cloth again. And anyone, if you ever see carding cloth for sale or a supplier that's not like uh, an e-buyer seller in outer Mongolia, you know, someone you can like ring up and discuss it with. That's what I'm after. Put me in touch. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, I'll have a look later then, Richard. <laughs> yeah, I um, <coughs> my mates have got a border collie that I used to dog sit when they went away. Um, lovely dog, giddy kipper. Um, because it's got two owners, it's mum and dad. It's stuck in a bit of a attention loop. When they go away and it's just me and her, it, it, she seems to go, oh yeah, I, I, it's, things are better if I'm chill. But yeah, she did try eating me out once. She weren't so bad with the alpaca one, but the sheep's one, like I say, they always stink a bit. Um... Oh, thanks, Tommy. <laughs> that dull. <laughs> yeah, it is um, It is one of them processes that you love or hate. I don't mind it. It's actually, I've been needing a core workout and I'm having to consciously sit upright and engage my abs as I'm doing this. So that's something I'm going to explore on the channel in the future when I can do it right. Because I've got a, a, a contact who's a, a work, an occupational work physiotherapist um i was going to get her to come on and discuss how to use your hobbies and your work work life to get exercise particularly if it's recuperative you know getting over an injury or something i've got like i've got two hernias and uh knackered shoulders and let's not talk about my back in front of my mum because hers is worse um but yeah, managing all these things, you, there's no time to go and go to a gym and do the exercises I have to do. So I have to work away of incorporating them into life. And uh, I wish there'd been some YouTube videos there just pointing it out to me when I needed it, instead of me having to work it all out myself. Which is what this is all about, of course. What's my mother on about? Not too tough, no too tough and pretty. Oh, I forgot what I was talking about. So there's a 20 second delay for comments, mother, out of interest. So it, by the time yours comes up and I see what's going on, I forgot what I was just talking about. Ha ha ha! 
<laughs> Where do you think the name comes from, Steve? <laughs> I think that's what my dad said to me actually when I told him I'd taken up spinning wool. He goes, it's not the worst thing I could have heard about you and sheep, son. Given heritage. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Steve. <laughs> hey, actually, Steve, last night I had you. Uh, I had you. Were it last night? No. Were it? Times all blurred into one. You were doing your off centre spheres. I had you on whilst I were doing uh, my clock. Now I've not done my clock video yet. It'll not be out till probably close to the deadline for the January clock challenge. But it's. Um, there was a, a, a brief moment of off-centre turning in that and uh, it stayed brief because it were a little... It's, it's the reason I weren't in the comment on your chat. It took a lot of kind of concentration and not just like tool presentation because I did that like pretty much, you know, like that with the tool presentation. But it involved walking around when they back to the wall around the piece coming here just to get to the off button off it was an outboard off center it was bum twitchy and i were never going to get a good cut uh so i ended up going with a little bit of texturing gets you out of all sorts of trouble doesn't it texturing but yeah i'm uh i'm looking forward to if i can pull off the edit that i've planned for my clock video it'll uh, it'll make me smile a lot and hopefully you guys too what have I missed? What what's called in English either? I can't go back up in chat. I'm scared of it crashing. Oh Welsh name. My uh, my name is like my dad's called David and dies like what you know. It's a diminutive form of David in Welsh, but it's also I found in a name book. It's its own name means bright or shining. Doesn't sound like me and my cheery disposition at all, does it, Mother? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that outboard turning, it's uh, uh, off center, out of balance turning. It's, um, well, that's the problem with. Well, it's not a problem, but the Coronet Herald's got little rubber feet on, which are great for dampening ever so slightly if you've chosen not to bolt it down, which I have. I've chosen not to bolt mine down because I need to be able to move it around and it's light enough to pick an end up and move it. However, when you get it spinning, those rubber, little rubber feet are just soft enough or hard enough to get up like an oscillation and the thing dances like a right and it, it quite literally you know uh, what the reason i decided to go to hand carving that after uh spinning it up and making a few cuts was the fact that the lathe started walking into a position where i wouldn't have been able to get to the off switch <laughs> imagine that your lathe just sat there in the corner Blocking your way to the uh, the consumer unit to switch the power off. Literally waiting for a power cut before you can switch it off. <laughs> dear, dear. That's the kind of malarkey I'd get stuck in that as well. Human hair. I've, uh, yeah, I've thought, I've thought about when I finally have to cut my hair off. Um then I might try spinning it, but not recommended. I don't think human hair is strong enough. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> yes, fully knitted outfits. I remember being mortified once by my granddad taking me swimming and he'd got a pair of knitted swimming trunks on. Seriously, I bet, me, I, bet I hear my mum's laughing from here in a minute. My, gr <laughs> my granddad, bless him. <laughs> His swimming antics. 
Oh dear. Yeah, I um, I was looking at a 35, 20, whatever it is that one of our club members was selling, Steve. Um, he's just upgraded to the Vic Mark because he wanted a swivel head. And he said he went down to uh, Simon Ope's, took some pieces he'd had that were off-centre um, off and worked really well. You know, his, his, his jet didn't wobble, tried him out on the Vic Mark and that was kind of his deciding factor. He, uh, I find him quite inspiring, some of the work Graham does. Um, Graham Brooks, if you, any of you know him in the clubs and the chats and whatever. He, some cracking off centre stuff and it's, it's the kind of stuff when I've got time to turn for pleasure, I'm going to get into because it, it gets you thinking about the numbers. I like that. I also like just creating just shapes and doing, I like to turn by eye as well. Um, I've spent enough of my childhood looking at artistic books and going around galleries and museums and absorbing all forms of art to have de developed a, I think an okay eye. One of the, I'm very happy with this clock I've done to say that I pulled idea out of me head in, you know, seconds just sat thinking oh yeah it's halfway through january and you've not done the clock yet um but yeah if any of you saw the wibbly wobbly uh pedestal vase that i did pedestal bowl i love the lines on that and the the wenge wing bowl i did not long since um i love the wings on that so only clearly did because it's them that's give us uh another van full of wood today you know, it's amazing how uh, generous people are being when they hear what we're doing. I mean, I know I'm passionate about it, but I waffle on and explain what I want to do, and I feel conscious that it's going to be a while before I'm actually really doing any of the, the helping or accessing the people I really want to help. But people seem to understand it, that it's a process, and there's... Uh, it's been, I mean, it's not like, it's not like it's a viable entity in and of itself yet, but the donations that we've had have got us so much further than we ever could have been. <laughs> Eva, my mum's watching. So yeah, guys, this is this is what you came for, isn't it? The chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not surprised that we're stuck in the low twenties for tonight. I, I think a lot a lot of people have popped their heads in, and uh, I can just about see the analytics. People have popped their heads in and gone, uh, yeah. I mean, to make matters worse as well, it's it's a black it's black fleece, so you can't even see the level of detail that you'd see if it was a different colour. I'm going to put you on the other camera and see if that's a, a better picture. It's maybe the lighting's different, whether it's a better picture or not, I don't know. Tell me which you prefer in the comments, guys. It's all right, Eva, she'll be googling it now. Yeah, Robert, I, uh, I told we about making a better life because up until recently it's been me and uh, my niece Kayleigh. But she's, she's well, she's having a rough time and uh, it's just me for now. But I've got a board put together. So, it, you know, we is accurate and I don't want... See, that's the problem with the heater on. I've now got off up and sticking to the ceiling. Um, yeah, it is a wee, and I don't want it to be the die show. 
it's about time I started showing a few more things other than just the turning but I do want to kind of use the lives as an opportunity to get used to demonstrating turning because as I've said in the past it crafts I've done it's one that I enjoy more than any other and to be able to pass that on share it and you know get onto that circuit and that group of people in people in this community and things like Maker Central will be good as you know I like really Central I didn't think they were going to be such a a wide uh, selection of different different crafts demonstrated there I mean Tandy leather working who I've bought equipment and supplies from over the years I had some great um, some great sewing machines big industrials um but yeah it's uh i don't know it's it's something different but it's difficult to structure a, a lesson it's difficult really i'm hoping that if anyone watches this in the future that's wanting to learn they can actually see see what i'm doing enough to be able to quality of any hand cards other than these Ashfords but Ash, they really are like they've established themselves as the Rolls Royce of well not the Rolls Royce perhaps the full of uh, spinning and weaving equipment actually I had a look at not not had my hands on one in person but I've had photographs of one of their mini uh, mini looms in of uh, replicating it at some point my hands on a, a real one to take some measurements from, that would be brilliant. Anything else? The, the spinning. The spinning fibres very quickly become quite an expensive hobby, particularly if you're having to buy fleet. Um, saying this again for a record for anyone that sees it. Try your local milk, man. Say do with your coloured fleeces because the wool board the national wool board won't take them. and if they say oh well we dump them or we it's that always so i've got to say well look give me and i'll give you a bit of wool them back and they might go for it woman uh she's given me quite a few of their sheep there's an even a friend had got some that she he said, just try this, see what you think. Still got that to process, actually. It's what space. Um, it's... Uh, it's a resource that's worth using, that. It just seems a shame that... I mean, often, coloured sheep, the wool isn't quite... of the pale sheep. Even within a breed, I'm led to believe. But I sometimes quite like a, a coarse wool. You know, if you make a natural garment, um, something like a or swandry bush shirt, that out of quite a coarse wool or yarn. Uh, I've grown up calling anything that string. You know, anything that's soft and I've called wool, like I think many of us do. Wool is referring specifically to sheep's wool, I think. Hey, I could have done some research if I'd have had more time. You get a feeling for as well, this feels like a problem feeling when I get to that one. It'll be one of them that stripping away nice and then yeah look that's found its way in there that needs a nick.
What time are we on, guys? I can't quite see the time. Hold on. And there's no tech there, that's a mistake. Ooh. That's where I put this blanket down. Just gone seven ml, they'll be starting in a bit. Right. I'll see if I can get a camera handle and some of this up. So I'm gonna put you on, in fact the over be a better one to see what I'm up to. Uh get in position. Let's move this pile of hats that I've now got. Um, I'm going to have to be there to, to see what I'm up to. Uh, <laughs> goes horribly wrong, guys. Right, you will have to excuse me because I've now got everything. Um, we can get, oh, we can almost see what I'm up to there. Um, get a fresh bobbin on. I mean, I'm going to just zoom you in ever so slightly. Get focused. Yeah. Not on that though. Focus. The Don't want to focus. Focus. Do it faffing about like this, guys. But oh, there we go. Right. Not zoomed in that close, obviously. So you can see the wheel. I wouldn't normally sit with it quite like this. I'd be more and sat with the flyer in front of me. A lot of wheels work different. I'm just going to check the comments. Missed anything. Sounds crackling. Um, just to be me clothes that. Right, we take, on this example, just twist it, pop the flyer off, um, and if I remember rightly, yeah, you have to kind of disassemble everything to, uh, to replace the flyer, to a new bobbin on, so I have to take the drive with, the, the drive string off, and then I have to unscrew the drive wheel. Take this is like a clutch, like a slipping clutch. It's just a tape that goes onto the bobbin. I can then slide the bobbin off. And when I find what I did with the other one, pop that on. Screw the drive wheel back on. Obviously it's a reverse thread. Uh, get me brake on the bobbin and get the back end in and then rescue that see I might have to fart about with my tension hopefully not There could be electrical interference from my fan or something. Turn the uh, heater off once I've got this this on. Ah. Oh. This is one thing that my Ashford's much. Better. It's much easier. To but. you've got your wheel aligned properly it usually stays we're in business let me turn the heater off here see if 
The only other thing making noise now is the computer. She'll all go bye bye if I do that. Right. So, roll like to hand. Uh, where are we in the camera? I'll tease out a little bit and just like that. I always tend to do that because it makes it stronger. Attached to your bobbins. I like to start at the far end. So you go through. Spin now, it goes that way. So like that. There's then some way of getting through your act this one it's here so i'll pull a loop down with my crochet hook i turned a little end for so that it can live with the, uh, the machine then go in through the axle and pull the leader out and then i need to check my tension so spin the wheel up and your tension is controlled on the, another down here and it literally just puts pressure down I'll not know until I get spinning so with this hold on oh no it's not that way it must be the other way use this wheel and it it does go in the opposite direction to the other one I think it's been knocked it's out of line slightly. There we go. That's there we go. Right. And I'll this on top. That little bit I rub between my hands will twist in. The whole thing we're spinning is just your hand. And what I just did was too quick because it through there so no problem start again that through there this through here I've just realized something whoever put this leader on because this was already on it's a loop so what I can do I'm gonna get rid of that I can roll it by Leona take care love Tension's a little bit high. So I'm using all of the fingers in this hand. In my little fingers to control the speed at which it comes through and give it to tease out the rest of the uh, the fiber and add in in front like I've had to do now. People, once you get into the swing of it and you've got a set of nicely carded, you can pretty much spin, you know, do this part all with one hand. But yeah, just stretches out and spins. You can, I've not managed it with the alpaca, it's ever so fly away, but long fibred wool once and I uh, I managed to take kind of sub half a millimeter thread ideal for old woolen blankets just reweaving in and darning small be organized normally I'd have my roll legs on my right so I could pick one without stopping but that would involve different camera setup will it and a bit more brain power on my front. Uh, the reason the wheel's big, Leona, is because of the ratio to the small wheel, it gets you more speed. This wheel, if this wheel were an inch or two bigger, I think it'd have the top speeds that I feel. But, uh, position of this, my, um, my Ashford's uh, it's a wheels at the bottom and the flyers directly above what they call a tower. 
I do find in general this is more comfortable because with the tower you got to have your flyer off to the side because of where your feet are side and even now with it handled quite, quite a comfortable position to be in because you're generally doing quite a bit and it's again it's a lot of haptic feet Oop, that's about to pull out my hands and strip you'll get used to that whatever you're doing that and then you have to stop every now and again and just very quickly and we'll do it with this so you can see better lift the wool off the hook and the unless you've got they do a modern flyer that has a wire rail and, and that automatically moves backwards and forwards i do like the idea problem stopping and uh, changing the hook there it only takes a second out of your day to pull some people with wool have water to hand and use the with the alpaca as yet. That's why you'll find a lot of rotten and discoloured around the, this area because where I've not found cause for it yet. Um, that's not on this, it is a distaff, which is where instead carded wool and you'd have pulled off of that and just constantly be so any more questions oh. it's the one problem with the design of this wheel is these two uprights are just bolted supporting the wheel that you can't quite see in shot there Outer alignment. There is another way of uh, in the uh, in the thread, but I don't get on with it with a single wrap. To do and not me tension on the bobbin. So I've got a thread here that I can wind out, and it winds the entire from the head but as you can see the wheel and it's just that these these tenons swing round a bit and you can't tighten them anymore <laughs> and as well do I You know I have this all the time, whenever a couple of days of, hold on a minute, I've done this before, yeah, this is odd. Stay in line will you? Oh, there we go. Maybe it's the flyer that's moving. No. all over the place don't know why this is uh... right it's showing 19 in Just wondering whether people were all gone because I want to get myself together
Must, that reminds me, I need to. We're live. I'll have to hear a bell about that. Right, no worries, Gav. I'll wrap this up at half past. To, I need to sort that out. I'm So yeah, you've got spinning as well as carding tonight, which is not what I was expecting. Chat, thanks for coming, guys. It means a lot. Um, And whilst I've got opportunity to be working on social media and that. We'll be able to reach and help more people then. can set them up wherever uh, and have a learn. A single, uh, a single twist, single ply yard. and let it relax for a while. It would certainly be more durable. Like shape your head and everything then. Uh, you know, a couple... 